Peace to the family. Peace to the family. Dang, it's raining. Breakfast time. That's my little one. Talking that talk. It's my baby over here too. <laughs> She's shoving food in her mouth as always. Now let me stop. <laughs> Doing the vegan thing. Nefertari. Nefertari, say hi. Hi. Peace to the family. Yeah, so I want you guys to go out and check that movie. It's coming out this spring. True to the game too. Show your brother that support and check it out. As I be telling y'all, I'm too smart to be broke. So it's a pleasure as well as an honor to be able to contribute and be involved in the project by whatever means, by any means actually, but I'm just I'm just real happy that I created a situation around myself where I could participate and contribute or add value to different projects, different movies. And so true to the game is very important. Other than just the entertainment value. You know, we had several black people being employed and it's a step into leveraging popularity and success from black media projects into more larger and more profound ones so some of you may say polite how you get behind a project like true to the game when you be teaching all this consciousness and everything like that it has it's for entertainment value you gotta remember this this is a movie that came out from the best-selling New York Times uh, publication or book by Terry Woods. And then Manny gets a hold of it, production-wise, and he put in a lot of pain for the first one. A lot of people were impressed, and it's a fact that part one on the big screen exceeded people's expectations. So part two is gonna be nuts, because you know, you got Vivica Fox in there, you got Tamara Braxton in there. You got Rotimi in there. You know, from Power, Dre. <laughs> you feel me? You got my man, Waka Flocka. Salute to the vegan. You already know. We got Waka Flocka up in there. You got you got a lot of people that's up in there that's going to put in a lot of a lot of pain on that screen. And uh, pardon me for anyone that I'm leaving out. But the reality is, when we start off with these projects and... We get more control of the narrative as far as black media is concerned. But in order to do so, these projects have to be successful. So the working minds that's behind these projects can now do special requests. Okay? So this is several brains working on this. So I don't have a say over what's going to be written. I'm not the guy that produced the film. I'm not the guy that's doing all of that. What I'm saying is when you have the right group of minds together, especially a black collective... You make these projects successful when you know certain people are a part of it. Because when you know certain people are a part of the projects, the influence will be there for projects to come, right? To put more of the type of information you would like to see. Nonetheless, the project itself, the movie itself, is very engaging. And But me, my perspective is I love the entertainment. I'm down with all of that. And there's some powerful messaging in there. That's what you also got to understand. See, sometimes y'all just see guns and black people. And, you, and I know because of all the stereotypes and the, the media imagery that is projected to pretty much emasculate black men, misrepresent black women. I know you like, man, I don't want to see those regurgitated things. But you also got to understand that this movie is coming from a perspective that has this inception in our communities. Because most people in the black community, they're not born with wealth. They're not born with inherited wealth. 
And a lot of people in the black community, they want to be gangsters. They want to live the street life, but they don't got no street smarts. And you don't exactly go to Harvard to get street smarts. So when you watch this movie, you're going to also, it's a demonstration as to how deep you go down that rabbit hole when you want to live a certain type of lifestyle. And that's for the men and for the women that play the part. Because in real life, a lot of women get involved with brothers and they get integrated into that street life or that world thinking that they're about their life thinking that they really want to be a part of it but they really don't see a lot of the miscellaneous factors and by miscellaneous factors I'm talking about the things that you don't really anticipate happening you know when we when we set out to be hood rich we are motivated based on all the pleasantries we're motivated based on all the appealing byproducts from the success of being in the streets but we never really consider a lot of the nuances a lot of the particulars how your friends could turn on you how people be sitting right up next to you scheming on you we don't consider that so it's always good to get a reminder so it can be an eye opener for some people that have to learn on that level because we learn at different levels so i ain't about to be here just because i could break down mortgage hypothecation and I could break down administrative affidavits of specific negative advertments for opportunity to cure and counterclaim and admiralty because I know how to break all that stuff down. I ain't gonna sit here and belittle my brothers and sisters and expect everybody to know what I know because I was on an entry level with the information. I was amongst the dumb, deaf, and blind or the 85ers, as you say, and I was in the streets making all sorts of errors. And when we talk about this True to the Game film, part two, it, it opens up it shows you more errors that oftentimes are not highlighted when we want to indulge in that street life. And so it, the, way the, the, the way Manny and all the brothers and sisters that's helping them put this film together. Hey, <laughs> thanks, baby. Do your thing. How's your breakfast? Good. You like it? That's great. So the way Manny and the rest of the brothers and sisters that helped put the film together did it, I'm going to tell you, you in for a surprise. It's not just going to be, oh, okay, it's just black people scheming on each other. Nah, it's not that type of vibe. It's a very good film, well put together, and they really brought the book to life, and I think that takes a certain level of artistry, too, to take a book. What Terry Woods, have, what Terry Woods did and what they've managed to do on the big screen, I mean, just picking the the, the furnishing, pick the decor and that, the, the ambiance, the the close picking that, the selection, the casting director, you gotta give props to the casting director because the all, and just how they put everybody together to bring the characters to life and the type of people that they brought to bring the characters to life. I, I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna exceed the expectations like the first one did, but even more because the combination of black actors that they put together to bring these characters to life. And that's another thing, when I'm talking about the art, the art of reading a book and then seeing how it is made manifest on TV, on the big screen, that's an art, man. It's, it's not easy. You know, we just look at the final product and we say, man, yeah, that movie's good. Can't wait to the next movie. But you never really think about all the sciences and the mechanics behind bringing a book to life or a script in, in general. But you know, come, it's gonna be great. But I'm, I'm strongly urging and encouraging our good brothers and sisters check out that movie. True to the game too. It's gonna be super dope. And brothers and sisters, after y'all have to get, hey baby, <laughs> look at her. They don't get no more Miami than that. They don't get no more Miami than that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's going to be dope, fam. But you want to get... We need more control of the narrative. More control of the images. We need more of our brothers and sisters in film and in production. And so... This movie is a demonstration of where we could take it because Manny started from the dirt with this. 
now you just looking at when you look at fam really putting this work in and, and putting out these types of productions he's taking it to another level every time every time he comes out with another project and like i said for the, for everybody to have the confidence in his leadership to put it together i think it's real powerful you're gonna really love the final, the final project To, you know, I don't want to give away any of the content, so I'm, I'm tiptoeing and tap dancing around the conversation. But the ultimate thing is support it. And I'm not a person that says, you know, buy something because it's black. But I am a person to say, damn, so much black people are involved. You might as well support it because it's quality work. So if I if I if something's quality first and then it's black, I know people say, yo, black first then quality. I got a whole different flip on that. I'd rather somebody purchase something that's quality. And then, if it's black, I'm really with it. And the reason why I say that is, if we keep telling our people, just buy it because it's black first. Then when you get the product, you're disappointed. And then now you're like, man, I ain't really trying to buy black products no more because we come up short of the bar because the criteria isn't there. Because I'm only buying it because it's black. I'm not buying it because it's quality. So why not look for the best quality amongst your people to purchase that? So that's why I look for quality first, then black, because I don't want to make people lazy. Because if my pitch is, hey, just come to the movie because, you know, black people are in it, that's trash. I'm telling you, you should watch the movie because the movie is quality. I'm saying watch the movie because it's quality. All right? Quality film. And it make you proud when you, when you think of what it takes to bring a book to life. And when you think of what it takes to find the people that can properly encompass everything that the characters in the book represent, I'm saying it's quality. Because a lot of thinking goes behind it, and we only see the finished product, and we make our criticisms when we watch movies. But we never really think about it. Just like musicians, they spend hours and hours studio time writing music. Sometimes somebody else is writing, and they... They create reference tracks because they can hear that artist singing their song. There's a lot of work and, and thinking that goes behind it. The, the people that's doing the engineering, people that's producing the beats, a lot of thinking goes into play. So for me, I think about so much of those things. Music isn't just music for me no more, and movies aren't just movies for me. Because I sit there and say, damn, whose idea was to get uh, a Rotimi? Or whose idea was it to get a Tamara Braxton? Wow. You know, whose idea was it to get these different people to be part of the cast for a movie and then i wonder how the chemistry works when they all get together so for me that's the beautiful part about film when you give it that much thought you say damn somebody really was on point to put because i could see this character playing that role like we 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 have a connection with dre from power on a certain level right so we don't really want to see dre doing no damn poetry or nothing you know what I'm saying? We want to see grimy ass Dre that we dislike all the time. <laughs> you know, so when someone sits there and does the casting, they understand how people connect to these individuals and retrospect to the project they have before them. And that's what makes it exciting for me because I'm into reading and I'm definitely into books being brought to life on a big screen level. I, I love it. So it's going to be dope. wonder why we can't get what we deserve because when the freedom comes you'd rather watch a movie and so since you feel like that why don't you make movies see black men do too much bitching fucking bitching all the time that's what i'm talking about so when the wonder why we can't get no freedom because when the freedom comes we want to watch a movie <laughs> so since you know that's the case i take you on that right and then i say so why don't you put messaging in movies since that's what everyone's doing. How the hell are you gonna complain everybody ain't like you? Why don't you see what everybody is like and then create something to service what everybody's like to uplift them and motivate them? You see, this, I have no idea what this person is doing, but normally uh, that's, that's the case. No one knows what these people do that they make these criticisms. So I'm saying we do too much damn complaining, man. Stop complaining, stop crying. If you see the masses is doing something and your, and your import is, we need to uplift the masses. Then how the hell can you get mad at the masses for not just falling in line or being in conformity with what you want? This is more the reason why I say, if, if nothing else, if that's your mo motive, then you should go watch the movie and say, let me, 
let me study the art and the science of this craft from every other perspective. Instead of you going in there watching it for entertainment purposes exclusively, go in there and watch it for the genius that, that, that was involved with putting it together. So you could then say, okay, I'm gonna take it a step further and I'm gonna, I'm gonna start getting into film production since I see, you know, brothers and sisters can't be free because they're always watching TV, always watching movies. So you should get involved with TV, movie, and film, everything. You should get involved with that. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? That's how you, that's how you gotta think. You know, so I can get it if brothers and sisters is frustrated. But like I said, how the hell are you going to wake up and then you're going to turn around and condemn everybody else that's on the level where you was at one point or the other? It don't work like that. Word. Y'all got to stop that. Too much crying, man. It's about reaching the mass. That's why I do what I do. I, I mentor people in sports, music, and entertainment because I vicariously can uplift and impact, empower brothers and sisters without me necessarily being the face of the voice. All I gotta do is put some powerful incentives into my brothers and sisters that have millions of following. And because they are influence, uh, influencers, then I can influence them, like I said, vicariously through the people that I teach. So now I get to multiply myself. When you learn anything about marketing, the number one goal is to multiply yourself if you're good at what you do, you want to multiply yourself to be that much more effective. You don't want to put everything in your hands because if you put 100% into one person, if something happens to that one person, the whole ship sink. But if you put 1% into 100 people, something happened to one person, you still got 99% left. So that's the goal. And that, that's why I get involved with certain projects. And people be like, yo, man, that's contradictory, brother. You're supposed to be an activist. You're supposed to... Then you don't understand the bigger picture. Oh, bro, you're not supposed to show all that money on the table. You here over flossing on the people and they pouring out. You don't really get it because when you're an activist, people expect you to be poor. When you're an activist, the, the demographic that you're looking to reach don't take you serious because they, they say to themselves, yo, you got all this knowledge, so why you ain't leveraged the information you got about the cosmos, consciousness, metaphysics, politics, economics? Why you not leveraging that information? And leveling up. Why you? How you got all that information and you still struggling? But you conscious. See, that's why people don't take us serious. You feel what I'm saying? And that's why I entitled this. It's a double entendre because I am talking about true to the game, the movie, but I'm also talking about being true to the game itself. You feel me? You got to be true to the game, and in order to be true to it, you can't be talking all this conscious information and then struggling. Cause that means that all of that is no avail. You are a master of every damn thing else except for your own reality. You're going to tell other people how they should eat, what they should drink, their zodiac sign. You can read their feet. You can do all of this. You can tell us about history and how we was kings and we was queens. And let's make this serious. Let's, let's get real. Let's get real. Everybody wasn't a king or queen. There ain't no damn society where everybody is a king and a queen. Some of you is the blood descendancies of, of presence. Of peasants, pardon me. Some of you are the bloodline descendants of peasants. Facts. Some of you, <laughs> that's just what it is. Some of you ain't got a king gene in your body, probably in all of existence on planet Earth. That's just what it is. So I ain't about to sit here and convince myself that everybody was a king or queen. But what I will say is, we're, we're royal in essence, as far as DNA is concerned, for the most part, because there's been a lot of miscegenation. It's been a lot of rape throughout the years. So the integrity of our genealogy has been compromised as well. So don't forfeit your opportunity to work hard to meet the expectations of your own divinity. And what I mean by that is don't just sit here thinking because you're black. That's your passport into success because you come from kings and queens. You need to put yourself in a state of mind that despite all of that, everything's working against you and I got to work that much more harder to succeed. You, you need to say to yourself, life is rigged. This shit is rigged. It was a setup for me to fail from the gate. And yeah, I hear all of that melanin talk, but sometimes you guys get so deep into how much melanin you got and how much better you are than everybody else. It don't make you work hard. It make you actually work less. Because you're so high and, on, and, and so consumed and on, you're so ethnocentric that you don't feel like you got to work hard because you're already so great. Now we got to kind of get ourselves out that mind. We needed that to build up our confidence. 
But like, yo, I could just make up any goddamn thing about what makes black people great. And people would just go for it because they're so hurt emotionally and insecure. They would believe any goddamn thing someone tell them. So long as it's positive and appealing to their ego. And it's that very disposition that is hindering us as a people today. So that's why I said I don't support stuff just because it's black. As someone, yo, you know, it's a black product, it's a black business, come check me out. I don't want to hear none of that. And I know people, what? I don't want to hear none of that. And I'm going to do a stream on that so I don't mix all this stuff up with you to the game. And I want y'all to know their, their opinions and the ideals as expressed in this video by Brother Polite are beholden exclusively to Brother Polite and do not represent the views and the opinions of any of the cast members on True to the Game. <laughs> but real talk, let me just say that. Let me just say that. It ain't, it ain't me. Ain't no one can tell me. Yo, make sure that you tell them. You know, I had this conversation uh, with my publicist. He's like, yo, you know, whenever you promoting the film and doing your thing, you know, remind people that it's a black film. I ain't got to mind them that. The people already, if you can't tell you watching a black film, then I don't know what's up. If you looking at the the producer and you and you know who the author is and you go down the line and you see the cast, okay. They know it's black, but I'm not going to uh, simplify what he was saying like that. I'm, I'm joking. He had a lot more to say about it, which I, I totally understand where he's coming from. But that that's not my motto. I don't say buy this because it's black I say buy this because it's quality oh and by the way this quality is created by black people I'm with that then that's more incentive because black people are behind it gives me more incentive to purchase but my first incentive is quality let's encourage our people to produce quality so no matter what they will be successful because black they don't have to produce black is what they already are so it doesn't really take effort to be black and because it doesn't take effort to be black if we tell someone buy something because it's black we might be stripping them of the right <laughs> to put more work in real talk so it, I, I say that to make my people work harder and create better product and, and better services Yeah, so let's let's get it in. Make sure y'all check out that film, True to the Game. Shout out to the brother Manny for even allowing me to add value. And, you know, if you're able to add value in any way to any type of project, especially in major media, it's a good look. But what I was saying in the title is our leaders have a responsibility to achieve material success. And we're going to carry this conversation over to my Instagram. Your leadership has a responsibility to carry folks. Your leadership has a responsibility to be materially successful. And the reason why they have to be materially successful is so people don't think you was BSing all those years teaching information. So you so smart and you so wise at everything else. Why you ain't do nothing else? You know, now some people be telling me, yo, man, you could have been greater than Malcolm. You could have been greater than Garvey. And I'm not going to tell you who I'm greater than because for one, we're in different eras. They ain't have social media. They might have cracked to the damn pressure dealing with damn social media, the way people be trolling and all in your life. Garvey attempted suicide twice because they was calling him a scam artist and it broke his heart that his people was be believing and buying into that. You see, y'all support these guys in their deaths, but a lot of you are the trolls in their lives. It's a fact. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? So what we got to deal with in this era I'm built for this era. What they had to deal with in their era, they built for that era. But let me explain something to you. I don't know about those great black men being film writers. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if they wrote screenplays before. I don't know uh, if they created a mentorship business. I don't know if they erected a publishing company. A consulting business like these are things that I, I do I'm not saying I'm better than I'm saying I'm in a different era and at this point the black activist the pan-african the black nationalist he need to also create some jobs for his family for other people for himself not just solely and I'm not saying those guys in particular because we know uh, Garvey he had his black star line 
You know what I'm saying? He had his own ship, import and export company. We know most honorable Elijah Muhammad had his own publication, steakhouses. We know. So I'm not confused. What I'm saying is the leaders of today, they have their forte and then they stay right there. And that's all they got. You take that from them, what the hell do they offer? You know, what other talent do they have? We got to diversify our portfolio. That's all I'm saying. Don't have these people make you think you just got to put the whole sacrifice, put all the eggs in one basket. Put the whole, look, this is what I do, and I'm out here to uplift the people. And that's all you do? You can contribute in many other ways. You could diversify your talents and reach people in several different ways. We're in 2020. So don't limit yourself to just being on YouTube doing current events and giving your opinion about what's taking place. Because that's all Negroes is really doing today. They're watching what takes place in the news and they're re-reporting what the news reported and they throwing their spin on it and conspiracy theories and boom, they're an activist. <laughs> That's what they're doing. They're an activist. I'm saying, learn how to write some books, young man. Learn how to write some books. Get involved with the movie process. You know, set up a real estate company. Something. Get, get involved with something beyond uploading videos on YouTube and stick with it. Don't abandon ship when the, when your hotel thing don't work out. You abandon ship when your daycare thing don't work out. You abandon ship. Don't stay stay on stay on what you stay on what you doing and even if you don't know what the hell you doing, if it's really in your heart, stick with it until it works out. Don't get distracted by other people talking about you or or being paranoid. Someone's trying to stop you from getting put on. Yo. Stay the course until you actually succeed at something. Because if you keep stopping every time you endeavor to do something, every time you initiate a project, you stop. Because it actually takes some thought. It actually takes some study. And you can't wing it like you do when you upload videos, read a page out of a book, figure you, ah, I got enough of this knowledge and I, I know how to stretch some shit out. Let me do a video. See? But when you really got to create a business, really create a company, really be an industrialist, I'd rather say that than entrepreneur. When you got to be an industrialist, it takes consistency, research, effort, and organizing. And the number one people in the black community that should be industrialists, I would suppose would have to be the people doing all this activism because you're supposed to be damn near a master at organizing so why you can't create a company and delegate responsibilities to different people to put the whole project together what matt she's right there on the first one yeah own a truck company don't just drive the damn truck own the truck company figure it out figure the de- figure it out you feel me? Figure it out. So you see the Negroes want to get mad at me because I'm out here figuring it out. Negroes want to get mad at me because I'm like, oh no, I'm into me. Oh, you taking pictures with white men eating food? Ha, huh? you eating off the forks in the white restaurants and da 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 I'm like, yo, listen, man. Listen carefully. That's me sitting down with a venture capitalist for purposes beyond your comprehension because all you like is conspiracy theory and rumors and gossip. That'd be, and that's our biggest setback in the black community. We'll take the time out to listen to some gossip in a heartbeat. We take the time out, listen to that gossip, boy. And then Negroes want to wanna text me and DM me. Yo, is this real? Is this so what, what this person is saying? And I keep telling them every year, creating another business, erecting another company, figuring this thing out. And you, you looking to figure out the gossip. They ain't going to pay no bills. You spent two hours of your life listening to a man talk about another man. Nothing motivational. What are you getting out of life listening to something like that? That's irresponsible. And we got to get out of that mentality. I'm out to go on. Charger? I got you. Follow me on Instagram right now. Brother underscore pride, optimism, love, integrity, gallant, honesty, and trust. No, don't spell it all. It's acronym. Brother underscore polite. P-O-L-I-G-H-T. P-O-L-I-G-H-T. Brother P-O-L-I-G-H-T. Put an underscore though. Brother underscore P-O-L-I-G-H-T. Oh, you know, it's been hard 
for people to share my videos on Facebook. I figured it out what I got to do. My lives are able to be shared. So the videos that I'm going to be uploading to Facebook now, I'm going to have to record them off my phone live so you can share them because my live feed still gets shared. But the regular uploads, not they censoring me. You know, I said a few things about the alphabet community and it wasn't even uh, violent or disrespectful, but they they got me, they clipped me. And I don't know if it's indefinite or they completely just making it where people can't share my videos. But my, my influence is wild because my videos on Facebook stay doing millions of views. It ain't been a month that I, I uploaded a video on my Facebook that I don't get videos that's doing millions of views. But I'm, it's good. It made me strong on Instagram, too. I got a video on Instagram right now at 370,000 views in three weeks. I think we're coming on a three-week mark. Is that I'm talking about home birth and squatting. Yeah. It's at about 370,000 plus. Should be well over that by now. That's the last time I looked at it. But yeah, check out that True to the Game 2. It's going to be dope. And let's let's keep that bill going. I'm going to interact with you guys on brother underscore polite on Instagram. So you got Instagram, I'm going to call you in and let's talk. Let's have a bill. Let's do it right now. I'm going to brother underscore polite. I'm going live now. You give me 60 seconds, I'm going to be there live. Thank you guys for listening. I appreciate you. And I want to do nothing. If I don't do nothing else for you, let me at least be responsible for motivating you. If I do nothing else for you, let me be your motivation. I come from Brownsville, fourth worst place on the planet, according to Google. You know, I, I lived on Newport between Amboy and Herschel, Strauss between Blake and Sutter. I lived quite a few places in, in Brownsville. <laughs> you know, pink houses for a while, and then also Brownsville houses. Lived over there. Rockaway Avenue, I think, is the, the train stop over there. And, and then, of course, I lived in the 90s. Rockaway Parkway between Winthrop and Rutland. We say the 90s, the 9 ounce, as in 91st Street, 92nd, 93rd Street. That's what we say. But I lived out there, right down Rutland Road, went to Rutland, went to the school at Rutland Plaza, 398. And I got shot, it was in Brookdale Hospital. Went to high school, the zone school, Wingate High School. Right over there by Albany Project. Come a long way. I ain't really looking to get distracted by nobody. So I keep my responses at a minimum if it ain't gonna be educational. It's just, we too deep into the game right now. You know, you think about this coronavirus, it mess around and depress the economy. Eventually, people that buy and sell from each other are gonna do it less because everybody's gonna start being impacted. Hotels gonna be impacted. Sporting events gonna be impacted. More, anywhere with crowded, where there's crowds to be impacted, and that means it's gonna affect the jobs. So if your family is the security, or they, they clean their room service, their cashiers, it doesn't matter. Eventually it's gonna impact everyone. And the only people that's really gonna be saved is the people that got some money saved. Y'all better wake up. See, that's why I be doing those consultations. Brother Polite45 at gmail.com. You leave your full name, your phone number. You know, uh, you see, with, with, with my remedies, it won't cause no nausea, dry mouth, painful erection, and all that. With my remedies, you gotta really think about this. <laughs> you gotta really think. It's going to depress the economy. You worry about dying, man. man all you got to do is level up your... your. Uh, we'll, we'll do that. We'll do that. I'll, I'll do a, People may ask me to do the corona thing. I, I don't like... I ain't no damn news reporter. Semi-snitching. Like, I don't like that energy. But where... Oh, they do something. I, they talk about something I talk about. I don't like... I, I talk about things when my heart is really invested and I really feel it can make a difference. But I, I can't be, every time something go on the news, I got to follow behind the news reporters and do my own version of it. That's corny to me. That's not what I'm into. That's not black activism. I'm not into that. But what I will say is, I, yeah, I got to do that coronavirus joint. Because you got you to gotta see it from different perspectives. I'm seeing the economy, and I'm like, whoa. And then you got to understand, like, you got people out here taking antibiotics 
so they could avoid getting the coronavirus. It's antibiotics. Do you know what the suffix biotics means? That deals with bacteria. Good and bad bacteria. Antibodies destroy good and bad bacteria. So all you're doing is destabilizing yourself further. You don't use antibiotics to eliminate viruses. That's absurd. But that's how wild people are. <laughs> Yo, if you don't got the knowledge, you in a jam. You in a jam. And this is why I be telling people, get your bread now. We got about another month or two. Probably. We got about another month. <laughs> Mama. Beautiful. <laughs> Look at your sister knocked out. We got about another month or two and that's all she wrote. You you think you broke now. <laughs> Wait till you get laid off. <laughs> you think you broke now? See? But all that time I'm, I'm teaching people how to get this bread, get your credit restoration microwave, boost that credit score, be able to get approved for larger lines of credit. Yo, all that is about to be a dub with this coronavirus. They talking about NBA players playing in a league with no audience. Yeah, I see it, baby. What, you ready to play? Yeah, you know that she wants to play. She ready to play. I'm, I'm, I want all the smoke. I'm down with the foosball. Oh, she want me to watch, baby girl. Go ahead, y'all can, y'all can get that working. Just. Give me like three minutes. Let me get to Instagram, switch over, and boom. But yeah, we, we got to have a coronavirus conversation. You worry about dying. You be, you'll be be poor and die from poverty before you die from that shit. You got to understand, over 100,000 people die from, from viruses in general every year in America. Bro, you ain't, oh, two people just died. <gasps> yeah, but people died from flus. Every year, it's the same people. People with so-called autoimmune diseases, lower respiratory issues, respiratory issues in general, but more especially lower respiratory issues. Elders, people who have diabetes, hormonal disorders, same targets all the time. It's the same targets all the time. But let me switch over. We going to brother underscore polite. Brother underscore polite on Instagram. Yeah, Y'all playing around, let these people tell you anything. You gotta get that L scorpital acid, vitamin C. But then that's a half truth. So when they tell you, yo, you gotta get vitamin C, they also gotta tell you, you need to ha make sure you have a fair amount of magnesium that accompanies the vitamin C. They also have to tell you, you need D3 that helps absorb <laughs> the vitamin C and the magnesium. I know, I need to get out of here. Let me get out of here. We're going to have that uh, coronavirus conversation. But uh, the interesting part is no one's talking about the impact on money. I like you, you, th you think you're going to be sick from the virus? You're going to be sick more because of poverty. You're going to be stressed out when you realize, damn, I ain't got no money saved. They ain't, people are going to be hiding inside of their houses soon. You got people saying, hey, countries is like, yo, we don't want you to travel out the country so we can contain this virus. They don't want you to travel out, you can't travel in. Like, yo, y'all don't really understand the day and time that we living in. If you don't got your money stacked up right now, if you ain't investing in something that makes sense right now, yo, the economy is going to be depressed. And likewise, when the vaccine comes out, you want to understand what are the key ingredients to the vaccines or key ingredients to vaccines in general. Why? Because then you invest in that stock. Because when the vaccine come out, stock going to go up. You got to know how to play the game with the heavy hitters. You can log into IG using your Facebook account. How you do that? Where is that? Does that mean that I could be on IG and Facebook at the same time?
Man, stop, no, stop worrying about me. this BS. I told you, I don't play games with all that gossip. All right, peace to the family.